All right, we got a lot to unpack in today's video. Look at all of these different testers. I even have one surprise for you, but we're going to save that for last. What we're inspecting today is about, what is this, 50 mils, 50 mils thick of aluminum. I don't know if this is extruded or what, because you can't see a weld on it, but it's definitely thicker on one side than the other. And there's very tiny axial cracks right along the transition from thin to thicker on this side. Now, I want to start off by saying calculations for test frequency or if you're using a slide rule, it's not always going to be the same. It's going to vary not only by test instrument, Cables might have something to do with it. Of course, the material and the thickness has a lot to do with it. Its coil size has a lot to do with it. You know, conductivity of the material, permeability. So you're never going to get the exact same results from one tester to the next on the same frequency. So that's why you have to do a specific calibration each time you do a test. You gotta set it up as best as you can with the tester cable probe that you have. So we're just gonna go through some of these instruments. I'm gonna start with the ms 21 b first because I've had it on for a long time and it's not plugged in. So the battery is not gonna last much longer. Now on the ms 21 b I didn't really have the best probe so I'm not really doing the MIS 21B a lot of justice here, but I want to just clear the screen. This is just a, a straight on pencil probe. And I'm just going to put my probe on the material here at the very end, balance it. And when I scan towards me, let me hit clear one more time. When I scan towards me, there's first flaw. There's a second one. There's a third one. And there's the longest one in there. So it's a little bit noisy, but I didn't have any tape for the end of my probe. But I know the battery's going to die in this one. So we're just going to go ahead and shut him down so he doesn't take any more of your attention away. Next tester we'll look at is uh, let's go to the North Deck. Let's go to the Nortec here and put that one right up front and center. How's that? All right, now I gotta find my cable and this whole menagerie of cables I got here. I probably could have had this set up just a tad better. All right, well, this one's not gonna die. All right, my favorite colors. You may have known that if you watch my YouTube videos. So we got uh, we got a little balance action. I got this camera hanging around my neck, so that's why there's a little bit of movement on it. So we got ourselves a balance balance point right there. And again, I just got my probe here. This is also a straight-on probe. I'm just going to point it down into the joint there. I guess you call it. Just start scanning the probe towards me. There's one. There's another one. There's one. These are all axials, but they're very tight axials. So I think if I just scan this quickly, I think there's five of them in there. One. Come on. I got my continuous null one, I think. Starting over. One, two, three, four, five. One off the screen there. All right, so the Nortec 2000D did its job. Now we're going to look over here at the, this is one of those Waygate Mentor EMs. This one is very rugged. It's been on uh, the oil platforms in the North Sea. So the case is a little bit banged up, but the screen doesn't have any marks on it. And uh, yeah, I, I like this tester. It's one of these touch screens though, so you have to get 
you know, sort of used to adjusting things on the screen. As soon as you let go, everything changes, so. But anyway, um, this one's got pretty good signal to noise ratio too. So if I hit this little button here, that's gonna be my balance. Should be, there we go. So now I'm just gonna put my probe, and this is just a kind of a pencil probe looking thing. Hit balance one more time. And just start pulling the probe towards me. There's one, you're not gonna miss that. There's another one. There's another one. Big one there. I guess I gotta balance to get this last one in there. And yeah, this one's a little bit. This one could have used some tape on the end of it too. I'm just gonna do this one more scan here. One. One, two, three, four, five. All right. The mentor did a fine job. Now we're going to see what the Ms. 28 can do. Where did I put my probe? Where did I put my probe? Here I just have a little, another little pencil probe. And the reason I chose to bring the Ms. 27 out was I wanted to see if we could gain any intelligence from multi-frequency testing. So I'm going to hit null. Okay, so I grabbed a probe that's not even hooked up. Got a lot of cables here today. There we go. There we go. But something is not right here. There we go. So I'm trying to do all this sort of in the dark with this camera hanging around my neck. So I'm putting the probe up to the very end. I'm gonna hit null. Now it's gonna start scanning back towards me. Okay, there's a little one. There's a second one. There's a third one. There's a fourth one. And there's the fifth one. Oh, darn it. I thought that was going to stay on the screen for you. Let's try this again. Put the probe up there. Hit the null. Okay. Let's try this another way. Let's try this another way. You can hang in there for the video. I've been here since six o'clock this morning making this video, so just hang in there, be patient. You're gonna see all sorts of great stuff. So I just moved the null point a little bit, so hopefully they'll stand screen a little better. One, two, three, four, five. All right. So this is multi-frequency testing. The green data is 500 kilohertz. The red data is 300 kilohertz. I'm gonna have to scan that again, don't I? The persist is set to about a minute, I guess. The blue data is uh, 100 kilohertz. The purple data is 200 kilohertz. Now, you may be asking yourself, What's the value in multi-frequency testing for doing this type of scan? And it's a good question. And the truth is, not much. You know, this isn't tubing inspection. Tubing inspection is one of those inspections where the use of multi-frequencies is very powerful because it helps you determine you know, what signals are relevant and what signals are nothing but troublesome noise. In tubing exams, you have to deal with tube support plates, cracks in tubes underneath support plates, and magnetite deposits packed down in the open lands of broached hole support plates. Then you got to deal with dents and bulges and maybe ID pitting, maybe OD pitting, OD mechanical wear. There are so many variables in the output 
with tubing exams, you really need to leverage multi-frequency testing to be able to distinguish all those variables and, you know, plug the, plug the right tubes, you know, and don't plug any tubes that don't need it. Okay. So yeah, the multi-frequency, it doesn't get us a lot here. Usually when you're doing the aviation inspections, you know, if you find something that looks like a crack, you call in the repair crew, right? Now the last tester I have to show you today, we're gonna to be using the MIS 21C. Actually, it's not the last, I still have a surprise for you, right? Okay, so this is a surface array probe. And I'm gonna just start up the tester, start the acquisition mode, which is right there. And this array probe has an encoder wheel on it. So you're not gonna see any data on your screen until this encoder wheel starts to move. But when I lay the array probe down onto the material and then pull the tester towards me, I mean, pull the probe towards me, we're gonna start seeing what we got there. Okay, so now I'm gonna stop the acquisition mode, which is with that button. And it looks like my C-scan got a little bit off kilter here. I must have bumped it when I was looking for a cable. But you know, you can move the screen around. There you go, until you get your display right. And then if you use a couple fingers, you can bring it on down like that. Then you can switch between the different display modes and you can use your finger to put the little crosshairs right on the indications. Mm -hmm. What else we got there? So there's our C-scan. And the amount of data that you're looking at in the link direction, the amount that's displayed is controlled by the size of your little window on the bottom there. So I'm using my down arrow button. That's basically gonna let you isolate signals of interest. So there's a signal of interest. There's another one. There's another one. So yeah, the, uh, the plate here, it's got, you know, one that's probably about an inch long, and it's got some that are like a quarter inch in length. You know, obviously this one's the, this is the long one right here. But it's, yeah, it's got five total. So they got one, two, three, four, five. So that's the Miz 21C. Got the cool C-scan capability, very nice. And hold on while I get the last surprise tester. Got the old Hawking locator. This is an oldie, but it's a goodie. It's already peeping at me. So now, where's this probe? All tangled up in the cords. Okay, let me prop this baby up. There we go. It's been sitting a while, so I might have to readjust it. There's my plate. Got a little pencil probe with it there. So I'm gonna train my lift off here real quick. Just put the probe down there and you hit train and you just lift it up and down a few times. All right. Now I'm just gonna go start down at the end with my little probe. And here we go. So I may have to adjust some of the settings here real quick. Let's see here. Audio, yeah, we'll have the audio on. I'll turn the gain in there. Oh, maybe I have to hit zero. Hey, now we're getting some action. I don't have the operator manual for this thing. I just have to tweak it. I'm just doing a demo. This is not a code exam. No lives are at stake today. There we go. Scanning now. Oop, there's the first one. There's the second one. 
there's a third one, there's a fourth one, and finally the fifth one. So all these testers, you know, whether the technology is much newer or old, uh, they'll kind of do the job, you know. But it's nice to look back through some of this ET history and see that these testers are still working and that, uh, you know, you have choices. And once again, your test setup, I mean, I spent a lot of time playing around with these testers and different probes, you know, so I could actually find the flaws, first of all. I mean, that's even, I knew where they were. I could see them. But sometimes it took, you know, the right probe type and I had to play around with the test frequencies. And, you know, these are surface flaws, you know, of varying depths. They're not all the same depth. But you don't have to worry about some inexperienced person coming in and grabbing one of these fancy new testers and taking your job. Because even with the best testers sitting in front of me here, it still, ta it still takes a bit of skill, you know, even with the right probe and the right cable you know, and the right cow block. It takes some skill to get dialed in. And you never, ever, ever want to do a test without having a representative cow block. Because that's the true test if your system is going to detect the type of flaws that you need to detect. Without it, you may as well be doing the test blindfold. And that wouldn't be good. So, all right, I hope you enjoyed this look back in history. And uh, I did leave out a couple testers, but I only had so much bench space here. And time, it is Sunday, by the way. Alrighty then, have a good day. Hope you enjoyed the video.